Delhi, India has a population of over 30 million people in its metropolitan area, making it one of the most populated cities in the world. It consists of Old Delhi, the historic part of Delhi, dating to the time of the Mughal emperors, and New Delhi, the capital of India, which was created in the 20th century. It's a fascinating city, and here are the top 10 places to see in Delhi. Number 10. The President's House in the House of Parliament The Rashtrapati Bhavan, or President's House, is the official residence of the President of India. We did a quick drive-by, and you can see the President's House in the background. However, you can take a tour of the President's House, and if I had taken the tour, perhaps the President's House would have been higher up on my list. From here, you can also see the Ministry of Defense South Block on the left, and the Ministry of Home Affairs and the State Bank of India on the right. Nearby is the Sunset Bhavan, which is the seat of the Parliament of India. It was built in 1927, but a new Parliament building is scheduled to be completed in 2022. Number 9. The Raj Ghat The Raj Ghat is a memorial to the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, an Indian lawyer who used nonviolent resistance to lead India to independence from Britain in 1947. Similar to the JFK Memorial in Arlington National Cemetery, the memorial contains an eternal flame. The memorial is a black marble platform that marks the spot of Mahatma Gandhi's cremation on January 31, 1948, a day after his assassination. Assassinated by a Hindu nationalist, Gandhi's last words, Hi Ram, O oh God, are inscribed on the marble, which is always adorned with flowers. The memorial was designed by Vanu Bhutta, who intended it to reflect the simplicity of the Mahatma's life. Number 8. The Kutab Minar The Kutab Minar is the tallest minaret in the world made of bricks. It is 73 meters or 240 feet tall, and the tower contains five stories. The minaret is named after Kutab Uddin Aibak, a Sophie saint. He started construction of the Kutab Minar's first story around 1192, after the defeat of Delhi's last Hindu kingdom, making this a tower of victory, a monument that signifies the might of Islam. In 1220, Ibak's successor and son-in-law completed another three stories. In 1369, a lightning strike destroyed the top story. The damaged story was replaced, and an additional story was added. The Kutab Minar is surrounded by several historically significant monuments, including the Kuwait Ul Islam Mosque, which was built at the same time as the Kutab Minar, a madrasa or school, and many former Hindu and Jain temples. However, the 4th century Iron Pillar of Delhi is a mystery. How is it made of 98% iron, but has been rustless for the last 1600 years? Number 7. The Sikh Temple, Gudwara Bangla Sahib The Gudwara Bangla Sahib is one of the most prominent Sikh Gudwara or Sikh houses of worship in Delhi. It was first built as a small shrine in 1783 to honor the 8th of 10 Sikh Gurus, Guru Har Krishan. He performed a small miracle here. Guru Har Krishan distributed sanctified water to the Sikh, believing it had a miraculous healing effect on their mind, body, and soul, and people still treat the pool as holy water. Incredibly, the temple feeds up to 75,000 people a day for free. The Darba Sahib, or prayer hall, is made of white marble. Much of the interior is made of stunning pure gold. Number 6. The India Gate The India Gate in Delhi was originally called the All India War Memorial, and it's a war memorial to 70,000 soldiers of the British Indian Army who died from 1914 to 1921 in World War I and the Third Anglo-Afghan War in 1919. The India Gate is massive. It's 138 feet or 42 meters tall. In 1972, following India's victory over Pakistan in the 1971 Indo-Pakistani War, 
a small structure consisting of a black marble pedestal with a reversed rifle, capped by a war helmet bounded by four eternal flames, was built beneath the memorial archway. This structure, called a Marjoan Jyoti, or the Flame of the Immortal Soldier, has served as India's Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. A Marjoan Jyoti was inaugurated by the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in 1972. A Marjoan Jyoti is manned round the clock by soldiers from the three services of the Indian Armed Forces. Number 5. The Humayun Tomb The Humayun Tomb is the tomb of the Mughal Emperor Nasir Uddin Muhammad, also known as Humayun, who lived from 1508 to 1556. The tomb was commissioned by Humayun's first wife, Empress Bega Begum, who was so grieved over her husband's death that she dedicated the rest of her life to a sole purpose the construction of the most magnificent mausoleum in the empire. Construction began in 1565, nine years after his death, and was completed in 1572. The cost for building the mausoleum was paid entirely by the empress. It was designed by a father and son team, two Persian architects chosen by her. It was the first structure to use red sandstone on such a large scale. Humayun's tomb is known as the Mini Taj Mahal because Humayun's great-grandson, Shah Jahan, built the Taj Mahal and most likely patterned it after Humayun's tomb. Here we see a cenotaph or monument to Humayun. His actual tomb is located underground nearby. Number 4. Chandani Chok Chandani Chok is one of the oldest and largest markets in Delhi. It was built in 1650 by Shah Jahan, who also built the Red Fort in Delhi and the Taj Mahal in Agra. His daughter, Princess Jahanara Begum, designed it. Mughal imperial processions once passed through the market, which at one time contained over 1,500 shops. It was famous for its silver merchants. On the main road, Chandani Chok Road, we can see the Gudwara Sis Ganj Sahib, a late 18th century Sikh temple. and the Red Temple, the Sri Digambar Jain Lal Mandir, a 17th century Jain temple. At the end of the road, we can see the famous Red Fort. Number 3. The Jama Masjid Jama Masjid is one of the largest mosques in India. It was built by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, who built it between 1644 and 1656 when Delhi was known as Shah Jahanabad, the capital of the Mughal Empire. Jama Masjid remained the royal mosque of the emperors until the end of the Mughal period in 1857. After the British victory in the revolt of 1857, they confiscated the mosque and stationed their soldiers here. They also wanted to destroy the mosque to punish the people of the city, but due to opposition, the demolition was not done. The mosque has three gates, four towers, and two minarets. It was constructed by more than 5,000 workers. It was originally called Masjid i Jahan Numa, meaning mosque commanding view of the world. The dome is flanked by two minarets which are 130 feet or 40 meters high. The first three stories of the minarets are made of red sandstone, the fourth of marble, and the fifth of sandstone. Number 2. The Red Fort Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan established a new Mughal capital called Shah Jahanabad, present-day Old Delhi, and commissioned the Red Fort, which was built from 1638 to 1648. It was the main residence of the Mughal emperors until 1856. Persian architect Ahmed Lahori designed the Red Fort. He also built the Taj Mahal for Shah Jahan. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The fort was originally made of white limestone, but when the white stone started chipping off, the British painted it red. The Diwani Am, or public audience hall, is where the emperor would hold an audience with the public, and it was also used for state functions. These are some of the most important buildings in the fort. From left to right, the Moti Masjid or Pearl Mosque, the Hammam or Bathhouse, Diwani Khas, Private Audience Hall, Khas Mahal, Emperor's Residence, and Rang Mahal, Palace of Colors. This is the interior of the Rang Mahal where the Emperor's wives and mistresses lived. It was originally made to look colorful with bright paints and decorations. 
And number one, the Deshera Festival. Seeing the spectacular Deshera Festival was one of the highlights of my trip to India. There were thousands of people in attendance to see the grand finale of Deshera, the burning of three 60-foot effigies, which represents the triumph of good over evil. Before the burning of the effigies, there's a fireworks show. Deshera is celebrated on the 10th day of the Hindu autumn month of Ashvin, which is between September and October each year. It's celebrated differently in different parts of the country. Deshera celebrates the triumph of good over evil with the death of the ten-headed demon king Ravana at the hands of Lord Rama. Ravana had abducted Rama's wife, but Rama and his wife reunited after the slaying of Ravana. Deshera culminates with Ravan Dahan, the burning of huge effigies of Ravana, Magnata, Ravana's son, and Kumakarna, Ravana's brother. As you can see, it's quite spectacular. 